Nicola with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make the Mean Green Juice. This is a juice that Joe Cross made and drank in his movie Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, which I would highly encourage you guys to watch if you not, have not watched it already, to truly see the power of juicing and getting more fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet. Literally, Joe was an overweight bloke from Australia down under, came to America, and uh, you know started going on a juice fast and started drinking the juices and uh, you know uh, got a lot healthy because of it. And it's really an inspiring story. You can watch that probably on Amazon.com. You can buy it online. You can also watch it on Netflix. You know, so definitely a really good movie. Would recommend it. Nonetheless, we're gonna make his recipe out of that uh, movie today. The Mean Green, and to me, this is, uh, you know, I don't know about, I don't know if I call it Mean Green, because this, to me, is like a, a, a fraction of a serving size. But I had a customer with a challenge using the Champion Juicer. Now, the Champion Juicer, I want you guys to keep this in mind. The Champion Juicer is probably one of the only juicers still made in America, so that's definitely a good thing. One of the things that's maybe not the best about the Champion Juicer is that Basically, the design has changed very minimally since they started making it in 1955, right? So think about that. Think about if you drove a 1955, I don't know, did they have like, I don't know, uh, four Thunderbirds back in 1955. You drove one of those today compared to, you know, back in 55. Back in 1955, it was the state of the art, right? But nowadays, cars got like automatic parking systems, man, you hit a button, it backs up and pulls in and parallel parks for you, and they got airbags and seatbelts and GPS, and back then they didn't have that. So, you know, but I do need to say that the cars of 1955 were built like tanks, they're literally indestructible, and that's kind of like how I like to talk about the Champion. The Champion's one of the most durables, durable juicers with the most durable motor, it's gonna last for a million years, it's, it's way solid, quite heavy, but the technology, you know, in juicing, in my opinion, has advanced a lot and the champion hasn't changed so much. That being said, it is a good all around solid performer, you know, when juicing certain things. And by far, it is my favorite device ever to make the banana ice cream because it actually fluffs up the bananas as you put frozen bananas through there with a blank plate to basically make a frozen banana sorbet that can be eaten instead of ice cream that is a lot healthier for you. Now, when you're putting and making the banana ice cream, you're putting in frozen bananas, and the reason why it works so well in the champion is because it actually adds air and fluffs it up. Other juicers do not do banana ice cream like the champion. And, uh, you know, in this same way, because it fluffs up the banana ice cream, it also will do that to when you're juicing. So it'll add some extra air in there, you know, which may cause extra oxidation and lower the nutrition in your juice. Now, is this a big problem? Well, Using any juicer is always better than using a blender to make your, you know, drinks, your juices, your smoothies because the blenders run at high speed and they run for a longer period of time than the juicer ever would. So I always recommend and encourage you guys to do good, better, best. So what we're going to do next actually is because a customer had a challenge making the green green and producing a lot of pulp, I'm going to exactly show you guys how I would juice this mean green and how I would juice using the champion to get the best results. You know, with some of the other juices on the market, such as the vertical slow juicers, you really have to pay attention as to, you know, how you prepare the produce, how you cut it, how you chop it, and how you juice it. The champion's a little bit more forgiving, but still, you know, there are some challenges with the champion, especially such as the celery. The celery, as you guys know, have these long fibrous uh, strings here. And these strings get stuck in your teeth. They will also get wrapped around the champion cutting blade so that it will not work. So we will pre-cut some of the ingredients, actually the ingredients that we have here on the table, uh, the dinosaur kale and the celery, I will be pre-cutting so that it will work effectively. Obviously other things like whole apples will not fit in the machine. So we'll just have to cut that into pieces that will fit. Uh, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this recipe. I will be juicing six dinosaur kale leaves today. I'll be juicing four uh, stalks of celery. I'll be juicing one cucumber. I'll be juicing a piece of ginger. I'll be juicing one lemon and uh, two apples. So the first step is to uh, prepare the produce. So I like to pre-cut all the produce before I put it in. And so just gonna take a knife and just you know cut this apple up into pieces. And uh, you can juice the apple seeds. Some people say it has cyanide. I personally think a small amount of apple seeds are okay to juice, but then you do want to remove the stems. I do like to remove the stems. 
And so we're just going to cut this, these apples up into some small pieces so that we can uh, stick these into the machine. Next we got the lemon. You may not want to juice the whole entire lemon. We're going to actually go ahead and uh, cut this in half. And I will include the whole lemon today because I'm that hardcore. And we're just going to basically cut it into quarters. Got to go ahead and cut this uh, next apple up here. Now, very important when using the Champion or any other juicer, uh, when selecting your produce, you want to get hard, firm, and mature produce, right? Uh, especially with apples, especially this time of year now, you know, going into the summer season, all the apples that are being imported now are from either last year or for getting imported from other foreign countries. And which means, you know, they've been off the tree for a while. When the apples are off the tree for a while, and especially in cold storage, they get softer and they get mealier, and the texture is not conducive to juicing optimally. And what's going to happen is all apples and all juicers will produce more pulp, you know, just because the apples are older. So I find that the Granny Smith apples work best when juicing because they retain their texture better than other apples. Nonetheless, you, you will produce a pulpier juice, you know, when juicing apples that are out of season. Next, we got one cucumber here. We're just basically going to have to slice this cucumber in half, and then we're going to cut it in half again so that it will fit down the uh, feed chute here. And uh, if you guys notice, I am keeping all the skin on the produce. You know, some people may want to peel their produce. I personally really strongly believe that you guys should, when organic, um, keep all the skin on the produce. Because, you know, next to the skin is where all the, you know, most of the nutrition is in the produce and it's so beneficial for us. Also, the fiber in the skin will actually help the juicing process because if you're removing the fiber, you have a lot of soft, uh, you know, fiber from the fruit itself that tend to mush up more and then will probably create more pulp. So the fiber actually helps push some things out of the juicer to get it to work better. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to... Uh, cut up this celery. Some people may just want to put them in the celery hole. You know, that would not be a good idea on the champion. You will get it, the strings wrapped around the auger and then it just will not work as efficiently. So, you know, like on other juicers like the Omega Verts and the vertical juicers, I recommend actually cutting into eight inch pieces. Luckily with the champion, we don't have to cut them that small. I'll probably cut them into like just about one inch pieces, you know, maybe three quarter inch pieces optimally and that'll be pretty good to take out the strings so that it will not get stuck in the machine. Alright, and it's as simple as that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making little piles of all the different produce items. So we got a little pile of celery, got a pile of apples, got some of my lemon, my ginger, and then finally we got the uh, dinosaur kale, delicious dinosaur kale. Now, when picking leafy greens, you know, I always encourage you guys to grow your own greens. It's far less expensive than buying them from the store. Plus, they're going to taste better and have more nutrition. People don't understand, you know, a lot of the greens that you're buying in the store are being shipped from California. That's where the majority of the greens are, you know. A lot of places, unfortunately, don't produce local food unless you're buying them at your farmer's market. So the same thing we did to the uh, celery. We're just going to go ahead and rip this in half. And you can just rip these into pieces, you know, like one-inch pieces which is really simple, or you can cut them. I just have me tearing them up today. And that's gonna help expedite the juicing process. All right, so now that we got all that prepared, the next thing is we're just gonna go ahead and turn the juicer on and start juicing. So now I'm gonna continue to juice and I'm just gonna feed in a handful of different produce items one at a time. So we're gonna first put in an apple, then we're gonna go ahead and put in a lemon, and we're gonna go ahead and push those guys in the machine. We're then gonna take some of the kale, we're going to go ahead and push that guy in the champion. We're going to then take uh, one of the cucumbers, push that in, and man, this is working pretty darn good. We got this pulp, and actually it's coming out fairly dry. It's, I'm actually pretty impressed. It's been a while since I've actually used the champion. Then we're going to take some, uh, some cucumbers here, and then we're going to take some celery and drop that in the machine. And once again, I want you guys to watch this. Like, I'm pushing the pusher down, and look at that, it just pushes it back up. This is completely normal. Now, one of the things I want you guys to be aware about is, you know, if you're pushing things in the champion and it's making a clicking sound like click, 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 click. I mean, it does that if you're feeding things too fast because you're basically backing up the motor, and it's uh, it's, it's basically getting a, it's giving you some feedback to let you guys know that you need to slow down a little bit. So we're just going to go ahead and continue to uh, juice all this stuff here. One, 
produce item at a time until we're all out. Then we'll come back at you to share with you guys the results of this mean green juice. All right, so I'm just about finishing up juicing with the champion. We're gonna go ahead and put the last piece of apple in there. And I want you guys to be aware that you know, the last thing you juice in the champion, some of it will get stuck in the feed chute and not get juiced. So I'll show you an easy way to help get it pushed through. I'm gonna put some of the kale in there. Finally, we got the uh, last of the uh, celery. And man, this champion's actually working quite good for a machine designed in the 1950s. Probably works better than other things designed in the 1950s at this point. I'm actually quite impressed with how pulp, how dry the pulp is. I mean, maybe that's why they have never changed it, because it just works so dang well already, man. Can't improve it. All right, so we're down to the last cucumber here, and it does take, a look at that, it's rising up, and it does take a little bit of force to keep that stuff down in there. All right, so now we're done, and oh my gosh, like we're almost overflowing my collection cup here. Now I'm seeing some extra residual pulp in there, so what I like to do is I just like to take some of this pulp that came out actually, shove that in the top, so I'm shoving in kind of the drier pulp so that the uh, wetter stuff will actually get worked through and come out the end of the machine there. Look at that. Got some of that stuff coming out the end of the machine, and I think we're gonna call it a day. Looks like we got all dry pulp in the feed chute now. We're gonna go ahead and turn that baby off. And I like that this champion juicer is fairly nice and quiet. We're gonna go ahead and uh, pull this guy up. Now, I do want you to be aware that on the champion juicer, right, it is completely normal for the champion juicer to drip a little bit behind the, uh, where the body attaches to the motor. You know, that's completely normal. This happens on all champions. This is the way it has been designed. Next, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take my little sieve out, and we're just gonna shake this down a little bit. And yes, the champion, you know, due to the design and the way it runs, it does produce a fair bit of foam. And uh, definitely some, there's some pulp in there. And then uh, what we're gonna do next, we're just gonna go ahead and take a bowl so you guys can see. I'm just gonna take the pulp and slam that in there. And uh, so this is the pulp that was created. It's a lot of fine particulate in here and a little bit of foam. It's not that bad, you know. You could actually leave this in the juice if you don't really care. I mean, actually it tastes quite good. I would probably just leave this in my juice, but I did want to make this video to show the pulp that was generated. And yes, it does produce some pulp in your juice. There are other juicers that will produce less. And of course, some other juicers will also produce more. So, you know, creation of pulp is it will always happen on juicers, some less, some more. And once again, no problem with drinking the pulp. It's just a taste preference thing. Some people don't like drinking any pulp. This pulp to me is actually quite agreeable and quite delicious. I might even actually pour it back in my juice. The final step is, you know, this actually produced about 32 ounces of juice. That's a fair bit of juice. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in. And we got a nice smooth consistency there. Not a lot of pulp in the juice. Now that I've actually filtered it out, we got one mean green juice, courtesy of Joe Cross and some organic farmers in the U.S. Let me go ahead and uh, drink this stuff. Wow! Probably should have included a little bit less lemon. The flavor and taste is amazing. I was able to make it in the Champion Juicer. Now you can too. I definitely recommend increasing the amount of fruits and vegetables you eat whether you want to juice them with the champion juicer, whether you want to blend them, or whether you're going to eat them whole, you know, fruits and vegetables, in my opinion, are the best things on earth that you want to include, and I'm glad that the champion juicer will allow you to include more fruits and vegetables, whether you want to make juices out of them, whether you want to homogenize them, make frozen banana sorbet or banana ice cream with other berries, the champion juicer lets you do it all, and these things are built like a tank. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.